Baylor was never meant to make a mark on history. When his mother was still young, long before she had her husband, she was a dragon rider, young, sought after, and rich from piracy in the region. Elena had flown her dragon across the Stepsons for quite some time, plundering and earning wherever she could. It was during that stretch of her life that she'd met a man, one who had left her pregnant, one who would be gone the next morning. That didn't stop her though. While pregnant, she kept fighting and surviving, eventually conquering much of the Stepstones on Dragonback. With only a few months, she would claim the eastern region of the Stepstones, proclaiming herself a queen of those unruly isles, with a dragon Taraxes beneath her. Soon after her 18th birthday, Queen Elena of the Stepstones gave birth to her firstborn, her bastard, Baylor. Child of white hair, of soft skin, and of purple eyes, a Valyrian in every sense of the word, yet born with cursed blood, for it was the blood of a bastard. On the Stepstones, that usually meant little, but Elena saw this boy as more than a bastard. She saw him as a curse, a reminder of her time of weakness, and a man who had betrayed her. She married a while later and was soon pregnant with her first true son, and from that moment on, Baylor was nothing more than a pest to her, a reminder of her shame and a showcase that she wasn't perfect, and she took out that anger on him and solely him. She couldn't see the positives in the boy. He was attractive and intelligent, with a mind quick enough to pick up most information put before him. By the age of 10, he'd already grown well with the blade, and from there he only studied it more and more, becoming a truly mighty warrior by his teenage years. Yet still she ignored him, she hid him, she mocked him. She belittled her own son. When he was 14, he finally had enough. Being of enough age to raise himself, and having learned well of the blade, he fled the Stepstones to find a new life. He had plenty of coin with him, though it would fade fast. Still, he spent it on things that he felt were important. A new sword, new clothes, new titles. On lessons from a mighty warrior in Tarosh, and then a warrior in Mir, and then one in Lys. He began to study and learn different forms of combat. By his 15th birthday, he was considered to be one of the great young swordsmiths in the world. In Volantis, he saw only conflict. Constant invasions from the Karls, fighting in the streets due to a high cost of food and life within the city. It was, in many ways, a hell of a place, but it was a place where he picked up much of his combat capabilities. He was knighted by a Volantian noble and fought against a secessionist movement within Volantis, known as the First Uprising. By the time he would leave the country, there would be two more, and then another to come soon after that. These fightings, these disruptions, this horrid hell of a place, it taught him a lot about combat, about preparedness. It showed him, more than any other place in Essos, that combat was an inevitability, that eventually all things would lead to war. For a year he served within the armies of Atlantis, making friends, enemies, seeing many die in this conflict, time and time again. It was there he heard of Illyria. His mother had made mention of the island and of the empire with their dragons and wealth, but it seemed almost like a fairy tale, an old wives tale to keep children at bay. His mother had one dragon and she could seemingly rule the world with it, yet he heard in North Illyria they had dozens, dozens of riders of beasts, of eggs. He didn't believe any of it until the day his boat sailed to the isle. With what coin he had left, he had hired a bunch of labourers to bring a vessel from war-torn Volantis across the seas, trying to avoid Old Valyria and its dangerous waters, to somehow make it to North Valyria. The land crossing between Volantis and Valyria was dangerous, filled with brigands, and also a guarded border protecting any from entering that way. It was clear that if he wanted to see the isle, it would have to be by sea. After much perilous sailing, they grew close. The day they arrived, their entire boat began to shake in the water, as flying low overhead was a mighty dragon. The men told them that was only a baby, yet it was larger than a ship, flapping its wings to fly toward another dragon, circling above the mighty city ahead, a city of opportunity. There the soldier would have his chance, there he'd be able to prove himself and perhaps present himself to the Emperor, showcase his true and royal blood. He had the blood of Westerosi nobility in him, but also the blood of Lyrians. He may have been a bastard, but he was more pure than any other soul. 
He was a mighty warrior. And, lucky for him, there was a war to fight. Emperor Jahiris, in pursuit of more taxes and tithes, had announced a blockade on Geese, claiming that they had failed to pay tariffs and increased their rate. Most of it was a lie, just an attempt for more gold. But few would argue with it. When new Geese refused to pay the expensive rate, it was all the justification the Emperor needed for his war. He called banners, willing knights, and loyal vassals to raise arms against the new Geese, to march against them. Soon he made a demand of the lords of the country that they should surrender and accept vacillation. Or he would burn them from their homes, destroy their castle, and place new Valyrian blood on their seats. This was interesting, for the Emperor did not have many other age relatives. His own sons were young, and even his distant cousins were all now landed or too young for the role. They were running out of Valyrian blood. And so it became clear to Baelor, if he could prove himself in combat, he could forge a dynasty of his own. A new house of an old blood. Hello guys, and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2, A Game of Thrones. Where we'll send the Stits in a very strong position with our armies back. And because of that, it makes sense to begin an assault on Geese. I mean, 30k troops, lots of wealth. Wealth which I think we all agree would be much better in our hands than in someone else's. I will, if he does submit, I'll let him keep his throne. If he doesn't submit, uh, who would be good for the throne? Maybe my second son. There's a lot, actually there's quite a few options. But let's give him a chance first, we're just going to attack. So obviously we've had a decent bit of peace to, well not full peace because obviously we've been attacked, but we've slowed our expansion to give time for our armies and for our men to recoup and uh, in my opinion they have, so we're ready to Take the chance. Uh, I'm actually going to remove maybe Dana, maybe my wife, and put Falasso on. Because Falasso obviously rides on Araxes. So get two dragons in this army. There you go. Why is No Man's Land? Surely he's a vassal of Marine. Or maybe he isn't. Interesting. I would have thought he'd be a vassal of Marine. Oh, I forgot an army. Let's get this army. So this expansion is in many ways sort of needed because we need to be funding our expansions into Valyria. And in general, you know, we we want to build a legacy for Jaehaerys. And he's already got a decent legacy. I mean, he did essentially... Am I not able to land in the port there? Okay, I guess I'll land it in Astapor. But part of the, the whole thing of, of this constant expression is, you know, he has a legacy. He won victory uh, and he sort of, you know, he won the throne through conquest as well as through inheritance. So... Ooh. Ooh, they've landed on us! Yeah, Castle's impregnable. We're just going to stay there. Let's get back on the ship then. I'm going to move and then move into Tolos so we can have time to get the morale up. Do I need any more troops than this? It don't need to be the 7k here, right? Yeah. Okay. Tristan, Chiris, um... Yeah, let's keep Quicksilver in, so we have two dragons in this army. Oh, they have even more coming in. Okay, now we need to move now. See if we can get land there before that army joins the fight. A land is consumed by a dragon fire, and my wife is responsible for it, as Faxalix has burned our own capital. It's not what I wanted, <laughs> dear wife. But that will stack wipe their army. What sort of army does that leave them with? Ooh, still 16k, which is killing the army of Yunkai. That I was not expecting. 
But their capital is on New Gisu. So this is going to be a problem. Can I land in Gahan, maybe? Because if I land... Okay, now they're going to attack. Maybe it's best to attack the capital then, since they're going to be distracted by Regal's army. Regal was able to get the landing, but sadly not much more. Okay, so we managed to get the landing, and now their 16k is going to come on us. But we have landed, so our mirage should be good enough to win this. Did we capture him? We captured him in the battle. Look at that. A successful victory of Agis. I mean, these wars become so quick at this point. I could immediately get the surrender, but I want to wipe out their army so that I, you know, can justifiably take Geese from them. Oh, Ray Targaryen. The Targaryens are still... Oh, no, she's of Dragonstone, but she's a Targaryen. No, she's just a random woman underneath Prince Vayan Targaryen. The only Targaryen left, but at least he actually does have a title in Dragonstone. Although he's fighting a war for a slave raid. Just wiping these armies over and over. Uh, I think we'll just fight it one more time. And then we'll call this a total victory. Because we've already taken uh, the capital. That's why we got the siege. Yeah, and these armies are just going to remain immortal. We'll call this a victory then. And we will bring all back to order. Yeah, I can raise those because these are loyal lands now. Have everybody rejoin North Illyria, reappoint the old council, and now let's determine what we are going to do with New Geese. Because since he lost in battle rather than submission, I don't believe he'll be keeping his throne. In fact, let's reorganize Geese a little bit. We'll be right back. And with our decision made, it shall be Lord Baylor Einar, who shall inherit only the Duchy of New Gis. I've decided that I want to, for a while, own... Uh, I would have made it a Duchy, but it's actually only capable of being a county. But either way, I want to own this region for some time and manage it myself. If he proves worthy, Baylor, then he can be given the kingdom. Quite simply, he's been given this because he is a young Valyrian, and we need a lot more Valyrians in this region. Valyrians are dying like flies over here in the east, or in the west, rather. So while the west suffers, the east shall birth new Valyrian families. He is the child of uh, Elena, that weirdo in the Stepstones. Losing more and more land as time has gone on, she just keeps losing her titles. More and more and more and more. And uh, she still has her weak claim on the Iron Throne, but I don't think she's ever going to win it. I think, even though she has her dragon, Tarax, I think her chances of having anything to do with the Iron Throne are all but depleted now. Which, fair enough, you know, <laughs> she's only got 400 troops. I don't think that's going to be enough to fight the hordes and the mighty foes, so to speak, of the Iron Throne. Speaking of hordes, we've got one right on our border now. So, in terms of other expansion, Hasahan and Hesh, and this whole region seems good. Calf is massive, but I don't want to deal with Calf. Calf is a nightmare to handle. I want to stay mostly within my own region. What I do want to do eventually is if these two could finish that'd be great i've been sitting here a long time waiting for these two to finish but they just aren't because i want to get the islands because if i own the islands uh you know i want to own these two the island and this and then we basically own the entire entryway and this entire bay is protected which would be huge for us that would be a 
very strong advantage to have to be able to control the trade in and out through the bays. But that's going to require these colonies finishing, which I would love, because if this colony finishes, I can give it to Lord Tristan here. Or most likely, more likely his son, um, Jibo, because I don't know how long Tristan has left. He's depressed, one-eyed. I mean, he's maybe got a good, good couple of years in him. I'm sure being a, the commander of his sort gives him a health boost. But let's look at Baylor here. So we are dealing with a bastard, because he is indeed a bastard. How's Aenor sort of his own house he's formed? Which I believe, you know, I may get rid of the bastard trait on him in future, because it's technically he's formed his own house. But he is born out of wedlock. So that is a true statement. But he's an incredible commander and an incredible fighter. Strong, mentally quick, ambitious, proud, lustful, wrathful. Very good stat array. Very, very good. So much so, I was considering making him the guardian of my son. The reason I'm doing this, when I saw this guy, the first thought I had in the back of my mind was, I want to get him in my kingdom so I can train my son. He's only 16, but if he could train my son, maybe my son has a chance at being a better commander than he is. I do know that giving him Gis is going to be very, very unpopular. And I imagine I probably already have a plot to kill me, don't I? Because I probably have a million plots to try and kill me. Uh, not one that I'm aware of, but I still have a feeling that I... That there is plots against me, because there's always plots against me. Do you have a threat? Who's the threat? No, that's not a real threat, that's fine. Um, we're going to try and keep you on perform state craft. See if you can improve the relations with my vassals, because I know they're not going to be happy about how things have gone for them in geese. Okay, so he, yeah, he, this Lord of Pookie has conquered this region of Alta. Dracoa, so we should realistically conquer here so that we could have both sides. But I'm going to leave, I'm sure one of my vassals is eventually going to go to war for this bit here. It only makes sense. Empress Dana has released her dragon from the confines of the dragon pits and is now free to run the lands of Illyria. The small folk appear apprehensive of what she may do. Why is my wife doing this? Oh, she's a lunatic. <laughs> Oh, no. And, I mean, she's been burned for a little bit now. I've seen a lot of suggestions about Majesty, about naming it Manticore, or, or other names of similar sort, and I have considered about it. And maybe after she does consider, but I do think with Majesty dead, it makes sense to have a blade named after Majesty. If anything, I should be considering new names for Chimera. That's one that's more likely to be renamed, but... Personally, I like the name Chimera, and I think I'm just going to keep it. I want to have a, La a Lannister in my court, absolutely. Especially if she goes to war against this stupid, lum-owned Westerlands. That'd be wonderful. You're a child. Why are you asking me to base 75 gold? So Hazahan seems like the obvious next step, but I think I'd get Trucebreaker. Oh, and has the hand, right? Yeah, I have a truce until 1808, and my diplomacy is already so bad to the diplomacy. So if I did that, I'd be in technically in negative diplomacy. Because you get uh, five, I believe it's a five um, diplo you lose. As I was promised to you, I had a scuffle from outside my bedroom, the rush outside. I found that my guy's deceased a cloaked man, so he was attempted to slip some documents into the room. Under questioning, he revealed that he was working for Lady Mazella and that the documents fabricated evidence to turn me against to turn me against my vassal lord. You bastard. The Lady of the Baked Shore. Can I stop this? Is this a known plot now? Oh no, yeah, I've did I completely miss that there's a plot here to kill me? I probably lost it because I always look at this bit rather than looking at this bit. There's a plot here to kill me. 
How to kill him. Let's see if we can end these murder plots. Need to pick up Courtius to leave. My problem with the truce is that it is a really long truce. It's until 18... Uh, or it's until 82. So five years from now, basically, is when my truce with Hazhan ends. I do not have a truce with Hesh. So this region could be pretty good next destination to consider. But I can't help but look at this threat. I feel like taking Hassan puts us even more on the border with Jaco. Although, right now, they're not a massive threat. They're probably more of a threat to Volantis than they are to me. Is Volantis all good? No, they're at war for the liberation of Volantis against an actually decently sized army. I'm not sure what the liberation of Volantis would look like there, but definitely something worth considering. Oh my god, stop asking. You want to replace Archillo as the master of arms of Marine. You want to Alton Keltigar has occupied your rightful seat. You're a Keltigar? So you're a High Valyrian you don't look High Valyrian. Who currently owns Keltigar? House Crab? No, they don't they normally own that? Maybe I'm being super. I thought they normally own that. Oh yeah, Sweet Point Sound is a Keltigar one. No, no, no. It's it's. It, I don't see a point in that one. Oh, he he has a Valyrian steel sword. That's cool. Oh yes. He has Crab's Pincer, the Valyrian Steel Axe. And he has his own armor. I would love some proper armor, because the armor we have right now is... No, we don't have armor, we just have jewels. Can I send out a smith? Yeah, search for a smith. On a new set of armor. I think this is a good spend of some money. What's Baylord doing? Okay, he's getting his army back up. Astapor's army is up to 9k. Yunkai is 5k. Although, it's honestly, I can't imagine he has much more... Yunkai does not scare me if he wants to go to war. Well, sorry, Volantis does not scare me if he wants to go to war. But Yunkai, I can't imagine has too much more. Yeah, they have about 10k total. Marine has... About 11k total, but he's super far below that. Hmm. Yeah, let's invite him to my court. A new son has been born named Balaam. So I have learned I can rename them. Uh, I don't know what it's under. But I should be able to rename all these kids uh, so long as they are below their age. Right now my son... Aemond, I believe, is above the age, because he's 11. But I could, if I wanted to rename for, say, Tehavon or Mataris or Balin. Where is the rename option? It's probably somewhat obvious and I'm missing it, because I'm dumb. He's a giant? How the nerve did Dana and me birth a giant? Yeah, we go, rename character. So what sort of a Valantian name? I mean, I'd love a Valantian name for a giant. That would be absolutely perfect. Let me have a look. For a giant. Oof. I mean, in general, giants are just... The Hodor, all of these sort of sorts. One I do remember that I'd looked at was 
what was there was Jacaro and Noranor are ones I saw in this game. Noranor's kind of cool, but I did write a list of some Valyrian names. Not, uh, not Valyrian, like Valantian names. Because the thing with Valantian names is they are probably closer to old Valyrian names than the Westerosian High Valyrian names are. Because High Valyrian is sort of those names have been lost to the Targaryen names that we more know. Oh, here's one I like. We could go with Jacos. Jacos Cinder. I like that. Oh, I can buy the expense one because of my prestige. We're absolutely going to do that. An army worthy of my prestige. They're never going to be happy with my price, you know. I even put on the thing, I'm like, this is the price, and then they refuse to take it. Valar, Rhaegor, and I had a great time together. I would love if Valar and Rhaegor would be friends, that would be really helpful. <laughs> Just have all of my vassals like each other, and like me. After years of war would be wonderful. Now, Sir Randall Cool seems to fabricate a claim on the High Lordship of Yunkai. Uh, let me see if I can shut that down. So it's Baylor wants to fabricate a claim on the kingdom of, I assume that's of old guess, of new guess, sorry. I mean, hell, I'll give it to him eventually if he's a good boy. <laughs> tell you to stop it. And tell you to stop yours. Try and Coax is or not coax, co or prevent, I guess is the correct term I'm looking for. Just prevent as much conflict in the region as I can during my life. I took my title through war. I fought another war, but now I shall be a king of peace. 75, just give me 75 and he's yours. Pain. Interesting. I was struck with the nervous excitement when Master Manator announced that it was nearing its completion. Do you ever see the Master in my room? As he unveils the armor rack, I find it almost possible to brief. What would you name her, Emperor? Warden, Champion, or Guardian? I like Warden, because I am like the Warden of North Valyria. Warden of Valyria. I'm not tr the true Emperor of Valyria until I have Valyria itself. I am the Warden. Let's have a look at my new set of armor. Forge rather the finest materials with expert craftsmanship. This armor turns its owner into a stalwart barrier against any foe. Gives us morale damage, monthly prestige, and personal combat skill plus 15. Pretty good. But just give me 40 gold. It's finally over. Somebody finally has bought them. <laughs> So I, I, oh no, now there's someone new they want to, uh, is he even good? Just touch 15. Yeah, take your business elsewhere. See if I care. The answer is, secretly, I do care. Deep down, I'm heartbroken by this action. And I will probably never forgive them for it. Ooh, that's a tiny bit of gold for a lot of prosperity. Let's see about what would be best to... Realistically, I want to increase these estates and stuff. But you need guarded stations too to increase this. Do I have guarded stations? Not from what I can see. Because primarily we should be trying to increase our Valyrian architecture. 750, but that's incredible. Is this like the... Yeah, it's the special province thing. Because it's like in Valyria, 
You specifically have the Valyrian Mines, which are very valuable. I mean, look at that. Six trade, six income from it. Hmm. I'll pay this old man to see if he can improve my martial. Because my son's going to hopefully learn martial ability. I'd also like to learn martial ability. Stay. This guy's just a constant war, basically. Yeah, he's increased me to a trained fighter, which which does fulfill my ambition. Um, room and air. What's that do? Is it just? And once your child receives twelve, you may right-click their portrait and choose introduce your heir to the realm. I mean, I could do that right away, couldn't I? Okay, in a year I can do it, because Aemon is 11, and we'll introduce him to the realm. It is time to educate him. We're going to go for the highest education possible, because he is not slow like his father. Ooh, seems like intrigue or stewardship. Marshall would be great, but he's also timid. Hmm... I think we're gonna give it a try. Well, twenty percent chance. I don't think I'm gonna get that. No, the RNG is not in my favor on that roll. It's a true history move from their treasury. Am I not able to introduce him to the realm? Is it? It's because he's not in my host. I see. All right, where are these savages? They're in Marine. Let's get the Tolos army. Not the navy. I don't need the navy. Honestly, I could send them. It might be quicker with the navy. Uh, I won't go myself. We'll send... Something I have... Cause it, it, what about... Making Baylor the Chief General? Because then I can make Anar Commander, can't I? Or am I full on commander slots? Oh, I'm full on commander slots. Okay. I still don't want to send myself, so we will send uh, Brezek here. Take these troops to the Demon Road. And from the Demon Road, attack into Marine, rather than landing straight in Marine, because that would do awful for their morale. Aemon Cinder has had a Dragon's Whip added to their inventory. Wait, wait, wait. Why did I not get a event about this? Has my son just born a dragon? He has! Bolden Gavis! He's dragon. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Excellent work, Eamon. His egg has finally hatched. A dragon of his own is born. And this is... An egg with no father as far as I Interesting. So it's not... I, is this the egg I, I, like, found then? This is the egg I found in, um... The colony, I assume. Interesting. Well, either way, I'm happy with that outcome. Of course, the question will become what will happen with uh, Ifelix when I die, but... We always ask that question, and I prefer to ask that question than just go with the boring. The heir always gets the dragon, because you don't. that's not even really a thing in Game of Thrones. When you have this many eggs, you know, you want your child to have a dragon of their own. Just look at the dance of the dragons. Every kid had a dragon. Should be able to just stand these both down. And Darcy seems to love ordering things. Uh, diligence pretty good. You can be diligent. Still got about three years until Master Han is I'll give you a favor the truth is over here Danis is becoming a skilled fighter did I not oops I seem to do this with a lot of kids in fact let's check that my kids do have stewardship focuses why are the lands dying up like flies 
Just all of them keep dying. Okay, it looks like I didn't give any of my kids education focuses, which is to be expected of me, in all honesty. Grandchild of interest. That's ba of incest. That's basically everyone in my realm. Let's be fair here. Idolizer. Then you will idolize the faith. Okay, there we go. So everyone in House Falan is just dying on... Are you killing them? Are you killing your own kids? I couldn't imagine that. Who's... It's some, like, it must be someone trying to take down his family, then. His heir is still... No, his, he has a new heir now. Traveling spring rumors of fire and blood. They say that Terax has been slain by Edmund Tully. Bloody hell. That just shows truly how bad things have gotten. Uh, for Elena was death that the Ursen made, made the right decision leaving her and coming to join us here. Although he's in, still not married. Can I get someone for you to marry? Let's arrange you a marriage because you should really be married by this age. Uh, 14. They're a Northman. I, do I not have any Valyrians near age? No. What about a betrothal? Maybe my daughter, Dean. No! He would reject, not accept the offer. Why? You aren't married. Why do you... This is an interesting move. Why is he... Why would he reject? I'll have a look at that between episodes and see why he's rejecting that. Because that seems like a good deal for him. Uh, trial by combat. Uh, trial by combat's not really a thing in Valyrian culture, is it? Why are we doing trial by combats? Stop that, Balar. We're not them. They're the lot who do that. Look, look, look how it's turned out for them. Look how doing trial by combats has turned out for these guys. Oh, the hell. We should be happy we're not them. Is Oclos still... <sighs> Is Oculus ever going to have anything happen there? Or is it just going to forever be stuck? Where well, Regal Cinder seeks to kill Morgazo Mal... I don't know who that is. I'm going to ask politely because he's a friend of mine. Okay, and he's okay with promising it. He's inherited the city itself now. You should really need to get married, my man. Otherwise, you're not going to have any kids. It's 3,000 troops if I raise there. Let's raise these. Why is he disfigured? Oh my goodness. He got burned and then disfigured. Jesus. your troops and bring them over here and we'll let these armies handle it. Uh, let's get Malaris leading this with... Where's Tristan? Is Tristan dead? He is! Tristan passed away! Now Lord uh, Gilbero, his son, rules Anogaria. That is a shame. Poor Tristan. It's also a shame for me because that's a really good general we've lost. But we can put A&R on our armies now, so that makes up for it. Okay, they're not even going to be able to siege because Yunkai is such a high level. What is the fort level? The fort level is 10 in my capital, which I feel like is even higher than the Yunkai, right? Yes, but for some reason, 10k troops were able to... Gog mine. They're going to land on this and they're going to fire a dragon. So I don't think they'll win. Oh, they might win. Let's get this army in quick then. Get them reinforcements, please. They're not going to arrive in time, are they? They're going to arrive right after time. Oh, no, they did arrive in time. Oof. I was playing a little too careful. Oh, 
uh, too risky there. My vassals are probably not happy with how I kill so much of their armies. Whoopsies. Hey, it's not my fault. It is my fault. But it's also not my fault, but it is my fault. They see snow. I do want to see what's going on with why he's not accepting I wonder if it's to do with him being a bastard, which means he doesn't accept marriages. But you'd think he would. I don't know, maybe there's something else going on. He does need an heir, otherwise I'm just going to get East back, which I'm not opposed to. <laughs> Certainly not opposed to just getting it back. I could make a dragon my rival. My son's dragon my rival. Surely that's an awful idea. No, I'm not going to make a dragon my rival. I can only imagine that going absolutely horribly. Although, maybe I would be able to kill the dragon and that would look super cool for killing my son's tiny, useless dragon. Everyone's like, oh, you should have seen him. He had an incredible power. He killed a tiny, useless dragon. Let's get prosperity up a bit. It's like, why did he do it? Dragon called him a name. Not a fan of the dragon. It's Hesh at War. It's just a raid, okay. Oh, Maybe I was right to not worry about um, this empire to Adolf because they have... Oh, what's Baylor done? It seems he's using my swords to export money from the peasantry in Illyria. I'll deal with this later, but that's certainly not a good look for somebody that, that wants to be given a mighty title. I mean, he's got 10k. He already has more armies than a lot of the other kingdoms without me giving him his lands. Oh, and I've gained fatigue. Food poisoning? Is that because somebody's poisoned my food, or because I just got sick from food poisoning? Either way, that is worrying. It's very worrying. Let's... Let's get the fort level up in Mantaris. So they ride Valax into battle. Quicksilver's son. Valax is ridden by Juan in Son of Belba. He looks like a cone head. Oh, it's not food poisoning, it's gout. Oh, God. Oh, hope to 65% for a normal illness. Either way. I don't think we're going to be living for long. My son is 13. Let's introduce him to the realm. Because this is going to be my move. Because he's young, but he's only a couple years off the throne. I don't know if I'm going to make it that far. Hmm. We'll miss your treatment. The outcome of this treatment is uncertain. The risk of this treatment will vary depending on the capabilities. Will perform some well tested treatments. There's a chance that the treatment has negative effects. The risk of this treatment varies on her capabilities. How capable is she? Decently. I'm going to trust her. One day, uh, Keza invited you to join her in her chambers. As the first bright rays of morning shone on her room, Keza went on and on about how serving you had been an honour. For you, Master, she breathed, before slitting her own throat with an ornamental knife. I'm cured, but she... Oh my god. She did blood magic to cure me. I have an unmarried heir. Uh, oh no, yeah, but I was about to say, this marriage can happen then. Marrying to Visenya. Another Valan has died. The Valans just keep dying. And you don't want to marry anyone. You don't want to marry my lovely daughter. What a cr what a cruel guy. You know, I should be insulted for that. 
Well, I'm cured, but I've become a lunatic from what I saw. I mean, I would be if I saw somebody do a blood sacrifice and it worked. I think that might, you know, affect my mental capabilities a bit. Why is it inactive? Oh, because I have to actually be smart. That's a problem. Is my son smart? Is my son able to use it? Oh, he's smart enough for it. That works. As Eamon introduces himself to the Stormsinger, he not only accidentally spills a, uh, a, a beverage on Jibero's shoes, but manages to insult all of Jibero's ancestors. This kid's based. You want Balerion as my ward? Yeah, that sounds good. And Princess Ray is sick. Yeah, I'm going to need a new physician just because my old physician killed herself. For me. But she, you know, still left a, a vacancy. Oh my god. All of the Storm Singers. He's, <laughs> it's as if the Storm Singers specifically he's doing. He absolutely hates. So he's just doing these awful jobs for. You can come to my court because you actually are decent. Doing. We are actually getting very close to all of our soldiers back. In fact, let's move. Um, let's get you training troops in Mantaris, since Mantaris is the furthest behind. Lord Lidsquisk of Kimberin is a renowned fighter and tactician. After having introduced himself to Aemon, Lidsquisk approaches you for an offer. He's willing to spend some time teaching Aemon how to fight in exchange for a favour. Yeah. I mean, he's not learning from the Guardian I actually gave him, so... It's good he's learning from someone. If he gets a good commander trait here, he could be a very high marshal, my son. Which I obviously wouldn't say no to. I would love a high marshal, son. I mean, marshal in general is pretty useful to have. Although his stewardship is a little worrying. The fact I have a higher stewardship says a lot because I'm the worst. <laughs> can't win them all. In fact, you can't win any of them if you're me. I believe I'll be taking my business elsewhere. They, they, the talking light... When you have done absolutely nothing wrong as a server, but, you know, they specifically wanted something you can't give them. And so, if for some reason, she asks that. Oh, you're going to war? Who are you going to war with? With Hazdahan. Another slave raid. Honestly, why not? Did I just accidentally join a defensive war? I joined her defense. You know what? Honestly, this one makes sense because this is me, like, helping out. I mean, Valantis is helping her too, so I don't actually have to do anything. But I'm, I'm joining this war for your sake, um, Baylor. I'm helping out your mother. Even though I, I don't know if you like her or not, but still. So Marine's actually got a decently sized army again. Yes, I'll save my aunt. You're keeping her there? She's your wife! What are you... Let's try and rescue her then, because she's is my aunt. Prefer he doesn't imprison her. I could issue a demand when we're at peace. I might do that. That might be smart. She lost? Everyone defending her and she lost. What's happened to her then? Let's have a look at, um... Baylor. Is she just wandering now? No, oh, no, she's come to join him. Ah, oh, here we go. This was going to come eventually, wasn't it? A uh, year 82. Your Imperial Majesty, we have received words that a dragon, that a dragon Balerion, owned by Ray, who was in my court, but I never actually got to use her. Oh no, she's in Yunkai, sorry, but Yunkai never got to use her. That the dragon Balerion has died in Yunkai. So for the grievous injury that Red have unable to fly and eventually killed him. A legend fades. You want to marry my daughter. I'm going to decline that because you've got your current wife in prison and I would like to marry her to 
uh, Baylor when he's actually willing to accept it. Uh, for that, we'll get her a decent education as well. Whose troops is this? Oh, it's her troops. For some reason, they're down here. Let's stop swaying. I don't know why I'm still swaying him. It's not going to work. I'll send a letter, though. My final act to try and sway him. Nope. He hates me. Gave him all of these lands of Borash, and he hates me. His son losing prestige over and over again. Firecatcher. Now, that is a beautiful looking dragon. And it's in Leng. Interesting. I might help them against E.T. because he is a real threat on their borders. Firecatcher is a lovely name for a dragon. So, as we approach... Ooh. I was about to say, maybe I have to deal with them, but no, they're passing through for whatever reason. So... I think we shall, for now, we shall call this episode here. We did have a little war. We always love a little bit of war. Although I would call it quite easy. I don't think we're really going to have much threat in wars unless a coalition forms or civil wars will still be a threat. I don't think Volantis or Karth would even be a threat to us. But these are my eyes. These are my targets. Do you think it is worth or it is time to make moves on these regions? Is it time to try and claim a proper foothold and just take all of these? Turn ourselves from, you know, an empire to an empire. Another thought I had is I could, you know, decide to have a secondary kingdom. You know, almost colonize the Summer Isles. Uh, they're very, very good for picking up slaves. And we rely very heavily on slave... Um, usage in Valyria. So, Samurais could be an option, Volantis is an option, Karth is an option, or the option could be to just focus on the smaller, like, wiping up the smaller kingdoms, secure all of the re these regions, and focus entirely on Valyria. Or we could just sit in peace. There's a lot of options of where we go from here. But, Emperor Jahiris has secured his position. Though he is quite mad in doing so. At 43, he had his... Uh, he's had quite the adventure so far. He's had to kill his uh, uncle to secure his title. Had to kill his grandfather's famous dragon. Definitely not uh, on the happy side of how things have gone. But his personal combat skills got a lot, lot better to the point where I think right now it's worth considering an actual decent fighter in the realm. He's a threat, and he could be an even greater threat when war comes. With all of these kingdoms secured, the path for North Valyria only looks like a straight line from here. Valyria can only grow. Thank you guys so much for continuing to support this series. Episode 11 is, you know, wonderful to reach to, but I this can keep going. I can see this going a long way. Whether or not we'll keep having these animated introductions for every episode is something I will discuss and talk about because maybe I want to move those to a different series for the early episodes because you know sometimes it can be dragging to get very far into a story and there may be less stories to tell but while I still have stories to tell I'm going to keep telling those stories so I hope you've enjoyed the story we told today and the stories that are still to come I think there's quite a few stories left to tell for how Cinder for all my patrons thank you for the support please do uh check out my patreon if you are interested you get the videos a week early or more specifically you get them before the next episode goes up so to speak so every time a new episode is publicly released there'll be a new episode on patreon for the patreons to enjoy please do check it out great way to support me if you do want to support me these videos are such a, a a passion thing for me. I never expected to get the reception I got to some of these early videos, you know, tens of thousands of views, a thousand views per video, thousand subscribers. I never expected to reach this point. And I'm happy I have, and I'm happy to keep going from here. If I, 
I'll, I'll use this little bit of a video just before we end to give you an idea of what's to come. You can expect some CK3, of course, some multiplayer. Uh, I'm going to be streaming some multiplayer and then possibly making highlights and making proper videos from those. Uh, but you can also expect some Victoria and some other game series, which I'm a huge fan of and fit within the idea of telling stories. Because that's what we're about here. We're about telling stories. Thank you guys so much for being with me for what's come. And I hope you stick with me for what's on the way. Until then.